Welcome back to Day One VoiceOver, the channel where I am documenting the ups and downs of starting a new career in the voiceover business. Now, if you saw my last video, I spoke about how my experience with Fiverr so far has been a bit of an up and down. Um, actually, it was mainly a very initial up and then nothing but down ever since. Um, I've since then been working to try and book an additional job, which would be only my third on Fiverr. And it's going to be a lot of work for very little pay. But again, it's one of those things that I'm trying to do for experience. But in addition to that, one of the things that I've been struggling with is something that I spoke about in one of my prior videos as well. My decision to have the equipment that I'm moving forward with. At the time, it was the Blue Yeti, which I have since graduated from and moved on to the Rode NT1. But I also decided to use an iPad, an iPad M4, one of the new iPad Pros that came out. And to reiterate what I mentioned in that past video, the iPad M4 is an extremely powerful device. It really is. It's so much more powerful than just about any laptop I can go and buy off the shelf. So from a power standpoint, it should be able to handle absolutely anything that I want to do with it. What it does have its limitations with is the software and the ports, supposedly. Now it does have the one USB-C port, which I can plug um, a USB hub into and plug whatever I want into that, including external monitors. Um, but sometimes I don't even need the external monitor and the Focusrite, being a USB device, plugs right into it and it powers, the iPad powers the Focusrite solo as well as the microphone all at once. So from that regard, what's the problem? Well, the problem comes in with the DAW, the Digital Audio Workstation. That's been my struggle, and I mentioned in that video that I was going to attempt to use DaVinci Resolve for my editing. And ever since then, I've been on a bit of a journey. I even called Blackmagic, the developers of DaVinci Resolve, to try and get some ideas. I've joined forums, I've joined online groups where people talk about how to best use DaVinci Resolve. And the best I could come across was a YouTube video where someone kind of finagled away to get audio files into DaVinci Resolve so that you can then process them. Well, I found a cleaner solution. All you really have to do is record in the voice recorder or maybe even GarageBand and then import the files and then you can edit them. What I hated about it was the fact that it was very cumbersome to use. Now, don't get me wrong. DaVinci Resolve is one of the most unbelievably powerful video editing programs out there and the DAW, which is called Fairlight, that's built into it, is also extremely powerful. But in a sense, it almost equates to driving a Lamborghini to go get groceries. See, the process of editing an audio file really isn't that intense. You need to have the waveforms there, you need to be able to compress it and normalize it, add de and whatever else you might need to fix your audio but that really isn't processor intensive. So the iPad can handle it just fine. And any digital audio workstation can handle that just fine. The thing is, DaVinci Resolve is such an unbelievably professional program that it has way more than I could ever imagine to use for what I needed for. And because of that, because of the way it's set up, yes, I was able to process files, I was able to put them together, I was able to normalize and compress, and it even makes it relatively easy with a shortcut that you can add that just adjusts for um, vocal settings. But it's still very cumbersome, and it just feels like the wrong program. So that's part of the learning curve of this whole journey into starting this new career and figuring things out. And it's partly my fault, because I'm the one being stubborn here in trying to make this happen on an iPad which in 100% of the cases that I've seen and every professional that I've watched on YouTube, not a single one recommends it. And I don't know why I'm so stubborn or so intent on making this work. The thing is, I haven't owned a laptop or even used a proper desktop in about 10 years. I just don't like laptops. I just don't like desktops. I understand it's probably a smoother experience, but then I hear people talking about downloading drivers and then upgrading the operating system and then it ruins plugins and it ruins versions of the software and features that you might be using. So that also has problems of its own. 
So with that in mind, I'm going to continue to figure this out. So enter Logic Pro. So one thing I haven't mentioned is that these videos that I put out on YouTube, I've been editing with Final Cut Pro, which is an Apple product. I used to use LumaFusion, which is fantastic. Um, I just never really quite liked the interface. And Final Cut is butter smooth for what I needed to do. I've yet to be able to tax it on the uh, iPad editing all of these videos. So I'm going to try Logic Pro. I'm going to download that. I'm going to try and fumble my way through that and see if I can figure it out. I know on the desktop, Logic Pro is a very popular program to use for, uh, for voiceover work as well as for music production as well. So I'm going to give it a shot and I want to bring you guys along to watch me download it, install it, and see how the whole process goes. So with that in mind, let's get the iPad set up and see how this goes. Okay, so here we are in the Apple App Store on the iPad, and I'm going to search for Logic Pro for iPad. And, you know, obviously it's uh, the way this works. The algorithm is going to give me a bunch of different options for programs I can use to edit audio on. And some of these I've heard, a couple of these I've even tried, and I just couldn't quite find what I was looking for. Now you notice it says GarageBand and open. It means I have GarageBand installed and I've recorded on GarageBand. And the funny thing is, it's my understanding that Logic Pro is actually built off of the GarageBand platform. And that's pretty interesting because GarageBand is something that's available for free on, on some of the iOS devices or all of the iOS devices, including iPads. So that gave me a little bit of trepidation at first, but look at the reviews. This has incredible reviews and with every video that I've seen on researching whether this is a DAW I should consider, it looks like this is an incredible program. So I'm going to hit get here and going to use face ID for the purchase. And so it's downloading now. So this is part of the learning curve, right? Of starting a new career. And with voiceover in particular, post pandemic, being tech savvy has become much more important than it ever was prior to the pandemic because everyone's doing things at home. Uh, thankfully, I consider myself a pretty tech savvy guy. Um, I can learn things relatively easily when it comes to this. Um, so we'll see how this experience goes with Logic Pro. It's ready to download, open, welcome to Logic Pro. I am going to try it for free first. Okay, so I went ahead and did the setup. I opted for the full year. It's $49 and from what I understand, you can cancel at any time. And this is where we start. Learn and explore. Looks like there's uh, quite a bit here. Now uh, there you go, record a vocal or instrument part. I'm guessing we can start there. Okay, so this is the screen where we're starting a new track and it gives you the options of MIDI, audio, pattern, session player. I'm gonna go with audio and okay. Well, here we go. Um, okay, and I'm also gonna see if I can benefit from using the Apple Pencil with this program, which should be interesting. Um, but it looks like I already gave it access to the microphone. I'm going to hit record here. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the Logic Pro application on my iPad. Currently only connected to the Blue Yeti, but I will connect the Rode NT1 in the future. Okay. Why is that still going? See, I still have a lot to learn here as well. Okay, so this is me fumbling through this, trying to learn a new DAW on the fly on camera. So this is fun. I think I saw from one of the videos before that these options down here are where you pull up what you need. Okay, that's cool. Trim. So that's how we would Let's see if I do trim next region. Yeah that let's 
Okay. This here, well, there's your compressor. There's your EQ. Okay. So these are some of the basics. And I think you can do, yeah, you can do some of the other things as well. Um, some of the necessary things like DSers and whatnot after you uh, download some of them, I believe. So this, what I'm doing here is part of what I had in mind when I started the channel. See, there are a lot of professionals out there that just simply know what they're doing and they tell you what worked for them. And that's great. That's fantastic advice. I just figured it would be cool for someone to see behind the scenes to know what it's like to struggle your way through learning the process, finding the right doll that works for you, finding the right microphone, the right recording space. And this is absolutely a part of it. So I'm going to continue to learn this. Uh, Logic Pro, which is currently my DAW of choice. I've moved on from DaVinci Resolve and we'll see how this works. We'll see how this goes. I'll keep you guys updated as I have with everything else. But thank you very much uh, for sticking around to this point. If you're someone that knows Logic Pro very well or has some resources you can share, I'm more than happy to, uh, to absorb all of that. Um, I need all the help I can get. And um, learning a new program is always pretty daunting. So if you got some advice, if you got some ideas, please throw them my way. As always, like, and subscribe, all the fun YouTube stuff. And I really look forward to your comments and your advice and your guidance. Thanks so much. As I mentioned before, it's the coolest part of this whole creator experience. But thanks again, and I will talk to you guys soon.